Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to do a really great northern Brazilian rhythm called Bayon. And one of its characteristics is that pattern that you heard me play in so many different ways on that first little demo. So that pattern is this. along with this pattern on the bass drum. Now this rhythm originally used the triangle as what I'm doing on my hi-hat. So it's the same rhythm, but it's being played like this. Now, like most Brazilian rhythms, this should have a little bit of a lilt towards the triplet. So that's important, and the slower you play the rhythm, the more of a lilt it has. As it gets faster, it straightens out. Now this rhythm is really handy if you're a jazz drummer because it can be played very, very fast. Unlike the samba, which has that busier bass drum pattern, as you heard on my last video, the samba video, this one is more open sounding, so it's just the first two notes and maybe a ghosted third note. So that opens up the music where there's a lot more space. So it can go pretty fast. Let's take a tune like Duke Ellington's Caravan. That's one that's often plays on uh, jazz gigs fast. So if they count it off like this, that's the half note boom bo do 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 do. You have a lot of options what you can play, but this bion rhythm works really well. So let's try that. So you see there, the A section would be in that rhythm, and the first time I played it, I played it almost a little Afro-Cuban. But with that bass drum pattern. And then the B section, or the bridge, is swung. And that's the form of the tune, and when you're playing the solos, you can go back and forth. So since the bass drum rhythm is more open sounding, this is a really great thing to be able to do on a gig. All right. So if that's, that isn't reason enough for you to learn the groove, I don't know what is. So today we're going to be going over many rhythms in my book uh, dealing with Bayonne, and I'm going to show you several different ways to play it. The first way, groove number one, uses that triangle pattern, which is this once again. Now if you're playing it light, you can play it on the bell of that hi-hat.
Can you see there? I'm ghosting that third bass drum note. So the rhythm as written slowly sounds like this. And then the one under it, the variation. So a good tempo for this one is around 128, and that, that would be the half note, okay? So one, two, one. Now you can hear how that snare drum is ghosting, and that's very important, except for the accents, which can be done as rim shots. If I do it on the cymbal, it sounds like this. So very polyrhythmic, you need to be able to play triplets and things under that so you can comp and improvise. Now the next one is a unison rhythm. So just like with the sambas, both hands are together. And the hi-hat's a little different. So practice that slowly first. So you saw there I started out playing all the bass drum notes evenly and then I got the last one softer. So you have those two options. Also you can play it quietly. This flat ride works great for that. Now this can go pretty quick. Uh, 134 is a good tempo because you're not having to go too fast with your hand. Once again, don't be afraid to stretch that rhythm out. All right, that's the character of this kind of groove. Next, we have some left hand lead rhythms. And we've done this before in some other videos, but I'll show you once again. So it's going to be shaft on the open and tip on the closed on the upbeat. So, so you're kind of throwing your hand out there, kind of like a Muller technique thing. Now, all those kinds of notes can be played as rim shots, or you can vary it as written. So you can improvise around the toms. And that little variation under it sounds like this. A good tempo for that is 138. We'll improvise a little.
So try that around the toms. Next we have kind of an upbeat uh, bione. So you can play the hi-hat like this. This works really well for fusion kinds of rhythms. A good tempo for this is 132. Now, the next one is a real heavy, fast fusion pattern. And the feet are going to be similar, just a little bit backwards with the hi-hat. So this is a real heavy groove. It could be used for even kind of rock stuff or funk stuff that's really fast and exciting. A good tempo to practice this at is 150, which is very fast. So good stuff. It's like Dennis Chambers there. <laughs> All right, and then we come to some um, odd time rhythms. Now with these, just like the sambas, I will cycle my hi-hat in four. So in other words, the hi-hat's just going to keep going like this. Even though we're in seven. So. And then the rest of the kit is going to play in seven, so we'll do this slow. Now when it's fast, a good tempo is 124. And remember, the click is going to be in four, so it's going to cycle around as well. Now you can also play this groove in a fusion style pretty fast. So if we up that to like 136, sounds like this. So that's a 7-4 biome. Now next we come to a 3-4-1. This one's really, really tricky. So we're going to do the hi-hat in 3 like this. It's written in 6-4, which is two bars of the 3. So.
and that can go around 130. So get the hi-hat going first. That's the trick to learning all of these things. And as usual, I'm substituting surfaces. Once you get that sticking, you need to move around the kit. You'll be surprised how that can mess up your coordination. You just don't want to play the same exact groove note, note for note over and over again. That can get pretty dull. So just remember to move around. Finally, we have a 5-4 bione, and this one will cycle as well with the hi-hat. This is tricky, so. Now here, I'm going to try something different, and you should too. Let's, instead of having that disco hi-hat going on, let's try to do the hi-hat like this. So, kind of a 16th note rhythm, so... Um, that's something I've been working on a lot recently when I'm practicing, and I've been trying to apply it. Let's see if I can do it. So I'm not sure if that's ready for prime time, but you see how these things develop. So that I've been working on for like a month instead of just the normal disco thing. And I guess I'll hear how it sounds when I, when I listen back. But that's, again, something you can do. And that rhythm is not in the book. But again, all I'm doing is instead of that straight disco thing. So we'll go out uh, with me just playing a little of that so I can practice. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.